Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru. Today's presentation is titled Family, It's What Matters Most. I spent the Christmas break with my mum and a few members of the family in my hometown, Hamilton, in South East Australia. A few days before heading home, I was contacted by a former classmate, Pauline, who asked me if I'd be able to photograph a family while I was back in town. I was very happy to oblige and had a lot of fun making lovely portraits of a really great bunch of people. Some opportunities should not be missed. Here's what I know about family. Time scatters as much as it can divide us and the tyranny of distance acts to keep us apart. The entire family may only reunite every few years. That's an occasion not to be missed and a fantastic opportunity to preserve that memory through the art of photography. It's hard to describe how in years to come those photos will grow in importance as time brings the inevitable changes to the structure of the family. Whether you are a professional or enthusiast photographer, I'd ask you not to let such opportunities pass you by. And remember that it's the photographer in the family that is so often physically excluded from their own photographs. When it comes to your own family, seek the assistance of an amply qualified professional or at least an enthusiast who is experienced in photographing family groups to do the job for you. Knowing someone like Uncle Harry, as we used to call him, with a good camera just doesn't cut it. I wouldn't buy an expensive hammer and call myself a carpenter, would you? Clearly it's important to know how to use your camera, but more importantly, you have to understand light, contrast and exposure and be able to work with people. For some folks that means coming out of the shell and turning at least temporarily from an introvert into more of an extrovert. But it's important not to overdo it. Remember the event is always about whom you photograph. It's never about you, the photographer. While you need to project confidence and demonstrate an ability to organise people into harmonious groups, you're not supposed to be the centre of attention. Although when weather turns foul or your flash recharge begins to crawl, a little soft shoe shuffle may well save the day. It has for me. Keep it casual, make it fun. My brief for the job was simple. The family is together, it's Christmas, and we want some photos to record that special time together. We have set up a Christmas camp. A bush camp over the Christmas period, if you like. Down the back of the property, where a number of us will be staying, and we'd like the photos made there. It was clear to me that the photos needed to reflect the family's relaxed approach and the setting where they grew up and were celebrating Christmas together. I absolutely understood and was going to make the process as enjoyable as possible, given the amount of people involved and the limited time I had available to make the photos. Colour or black and white? All of the original images were colour, but to my way of thinking, some called out for rendering into black and white. The above picture, full of texture and a full range of tones, was a case in point. I think it's a great example of a black and white photo and one of my favourites from the day. Wherever possible, I like to provide my customers with a mix of colour and black and white images. It's another way to add value to the job by providing the customer with a greater variety of images that encapsulate a range of moods. What's more, some skin types, clothing and locations are better suited to being reproduced in black and white. It's worth remembering that. Momentum and organisation. As well as a number of large family group photos, I also photographed a whole bunch of couples and smaller groups. When there's so many people involved, it can be tough for the photographer to keep track of everyone and their exact relationship to each other. It's always important under such circumstances to have a list and a marshal, in this case Pauline, to organise the participants of each group. It's then a pretty simple job for the photographer to get on with what they do best, bringing out the natural beauty in their subjects. Here's one of the younger couples looking like three million bucks and providing great opportunities for photos. Actually, everyone involved was so incredibly easy to work with that I really didn't want to leave. I just wanted to keep doing what I do. Of course, it's all fun when you're working with easygoing folk. It makes a huge difference. 
approach is critical to success. From my point of view, I don't have to worry about being anyone other than who I am. If your intentions are pure and you understand the reason you're there and the value your work will hold for the family over many years to come, the process is as much fun as so-called work can be. If you're genuine, don't fuss or draw attention to yourself. You have nothing to worry about. Just get on with it and the event will flow seamlessly. I like to work quite quickly when making portraits so as not to give those being photographed too much time to worry about how they might or should look for the camera. Of course you want to make beautiful portraits and you control that through lighting, exposure, composition, image processing and your ability to relax those being photographed. I think out of all the photos here there was only one where I took more than a minute or two before I was done and ready to move on to the next group or couple. The one that was hardest was due to very difficult lighting. I remember quite well the conditions were um, very high in contrast and normally I wouldn't have made photographs there but I wanted to make it work because the particular um, location was important to the couple in question and I'm glad that I managed to make it work. Light gatherer. Photography is all about light. In fact the word photography comes to us from ancient Greek. Photo meaning light and graphy translating as writing, drawing or painting. As long as you situate your subjects in a location where the light will produce pleasing results you're halfway towards making great portraits. If you're attuned to light you'll see their faces glow and their eyes come to life. You'll be excited by what you see and you'll communicate that enthusiasm back to the folks you're photographing. They'll begin to understand how beautiful they are and will be happy to linger while you make your photos. Needless to say, their attentiveness, cooperation and enthusiasm is also heightened during the process. But I never push it. I like to make my photos and move on to the next one. As a case in point, I would have made a couple images of this uh, lovely couple over no more than a one minute period. It's worth noting that not only are those you photograph in the spotlight, so to speak, but they are also very much in the moment. And that's really where life is supposed to be lived. The process of photography should be a great experience for all involved, not just the photographer. Experience and memory. This is what the art of photography is all about the experience of the event during which the photos were made in camera and the power of the finished photograph to elicit an emotional response as we remember the time, place and circumstances under which the photo was made. I feel that in today's digital age of overly retouched skin folks are far more concerned with what they look like in a photo when compared to the sandblasted skin of celebrities on the front page of magazines rather than whether the photo has accurately recorded any sense of their true nature. The world is full of blondes, brunettes and redhead folk. But there is only one you and that's why, while it's okay to borrow from others, you never really want to copy anyone else's look. You do so at the loss of your own uniqueness. I'm talking here about the difference between surface beauty and that of a real person who has experienced the world rather than merely existed within it. I'm so lucky to live my life through the art of photography. It's helped me to experience the world around me and to better understand my place within that world. And when it comes to portrait photography, I'm always pleased to be given the chance to create and record a moment in time that deserves to be preserved. Thanks so much for your attention during this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. You can find me uh, on various social medias, Google+, Facebook and Twitter. There are the links. I'm Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Bye for now.